All right, welcome. This video is going to focus on composite functions and specifically the domain of composite functions. So we're going to look at one example, the example up top here. They give us two functions, f of x and g of x. And if we want to work with the domain of the composites, we first got to find the composite functions. So let's go through first and find f of g of x. And then we'll worry about finding g of f of x as well. So for this particular function, right, I'm taking this inside function, this g of x, and I'm inputting it into the outside function, the f function. So this x plus 3 is my f function. The square root of 9 minus x squared is my g function. So for this particular one, like I said, I'm taking this entire g function, and I'm going to put it into the x over here. If I do that, I get the square root of 9 minus x squared, and then this plus 3 is still on the outside, right? Not a whole lot that I can do with this particular function as far as simplifying, so I'm just going to leave it alone like this, right? As far as g of f of x goes, right, now I'm going the opposite way. I'm putting this f of x into my g function. So I'm going to go back up here. I'm going to take this f of x function, input it over here in for x. So if I have the square root of 9 minus, and I have this x squared, right, and I'm replacing x with this entire function, x plus 3. Now this one, there's a little more I can do, right? I can multiply this out. This x plus 3 squared is really x plus 3 times x plus 3. So I can go ahead and do that. So if I do that, I get 9 minus well, x times x is x squared. 3x and 3x will give me 6x. 3 and 3 gives me 9. Combining my like terms, I can see that this 9 minus 9 will cancel out. And if I distribute the negative through, I'll get negative x squared minus 6x. So there's my composite functions, right? Hopefully... That is not the tricky part of this video. So now I need to worry about the domain. When I worry about domain of a composite function, I worry about two things. I worry about the actual composite itself, any restrictions that may be on the composite, and I also worry about the restrictions placed on the inside function. So in this case, right, I'm worried about g of x in this first function, the inside function, and I'm worried about f of x in this function, the inside function. All right, so let's take a look at what we have, right? With roots, we want to make sure that the radicands, the inside of the roots, are greater than or equal to zero because we know that we can't take the square root of a negative number. So if I'm looking just at the composite, I want the inside of my root to be greater than or equal to zero. So if I add this x squared over, take the square root, get this plus or minus 3, or the square root of 9 is plus or minus 3. So what that means is that the values in between negative 3 and 3 will work for this function. Values outside of that will not work. And if you think about it, right, like if you put a 2 in, uh, well, 2 squared is 4, 9 minus 4 is 5. I can take the square root of 5, that's fine. Outside of that range, if I put like a 4 in, well, 4 squared is 16, 9 minus 16 is a negative number, that's not going to work. So this negative 3 to 3 inclusive is my domain for the composite piece. Now I said you also want to think about this inside function, but in this case the inside function is going to have the same restrictions. If you look at this g of x function, well when is the inside greater than or equal to 0? Well that's what I just solved, right? So the restrictions for the original function, the original inside function, and the composite in this case happen to be the same. So I don't have to worry about it. My domain for the overall composite function is just negative 3 to 3 inclusive, meaning that the negative 3 and 3 are included, because if I put them in, I get a 0, and 0 is okay. Same idea over here. If I look at the composite, I want the inside of this root to be greater than or equal to 0. Right? I can take a GCF out. I'm going to take a negative x out, which leaves me with x plus 6 left over. Zero product property says I can take the first piece, solve it, the second piece, and solve it. If I divide by a negative, 
my inequality symbol switches. So now it's x is less than or equal to 0. Subtract 6, greater than or equal to negative 6. So the domain here looks like negative 6 to 0 inclusive. And if I look at the original inside function, f of x, well, f of x is x plus 3. x plus 3 is a linear function. Linear functions don't have any restrictions. They're all real numbers. So that doesn't give me anything to worry about. So I can just worry about the restrictions placed on the composite. So my overall domain is going to be this negative 6 to 0 inclusive. So whenever you're dealing with roots and composite functions, make sure the inside of your root is greater than or equal to zero. Right, other areas that we can run into, like this one down here, which we'll do in the next video, whenever we have fractions, we have to make sure that the denominator is not zero to make sure we don't get the undefined value. So thanks for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, and check out the next video.